the axiomatic Western individual as someone who was unfairly nailed to a cross and tortured. It's like, yes, <laughs> right, exactly. So what do you do about that? Well, I thought about that for a long time too. It's like, well, you don't get together in a mob, because all that does is allow you to be as horrible as you could possibly imagine and suffer from none of the consequences. That's a bad idea. So how about we don't do that? Well, there's a deep idea in the West too. It's like, pick up your suffering and bear it. And try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. Well, that's a truth. You know, I read a lot about the terrible things that people have done to each other. You just cannot even imagine it. It's so awful. So you don't want to be someone like that. Now, do you have a reason to be? Yes. You have a lots of reasons to be. God, there's reasons to be resentful about your existence. Everyone you know is going to die. You know, you too. And there's going to be a fair bit of pain along the way. And lots of it's going to be unfair. It's like, yeah, no wonder you're resentful. You make everything you're complaining about infinitely worse. There's this idea that hell is a bottomless pit. And that's because no matter how bad it is, some like you could figure out a way to make it a lot worse. <laughs> so you think, well... What do you do about that? Well, you accept it. That's what life is like. It's suffering. That's what the religious people have always said. Life is suffering. Yes. Well, who wants to admit that? Well, just think about it. Well, so what do you do in the face of that suffering? Try to reduce it. Start with yourself. What good are you? Get yourself together for Christ's sake so that when your father dies, you're not whining away in a corner and you can help plan the funeral and you can stand up solidly so that people can rely on you. That's better. Don't be a victim. Of course you're a victim. Jesus, obviously. Put yourself together. And then maybe if you put yourself together, you know how to do that. You know what's wrong with you, if you'll admit it. You know there's a few things you could like polish up a little bit, that you might even be able to manage in your insufficient present condition. And so you might shine yourself up a little bit, and then your eyes will be a little more open, then you can shine yourself up a little bit more, and then maybe you could bring your family together instead of having them be the hateful, spiteful, neurotic, infighting batch that you're like doomed to spend Christmas with. So then you fix yourself up a little bit, kind of humbly, because, you know, God, you're a fixer-upper if there ever was one. And then you've got to figure out, well, can you figure out how to make peace with your idiot brother? And probably not, because he's just as dumb as you, so how are they going to manage that? And so then you, maybe you get somewhere that way, and your family's sort of functioning, and you find out, well, that kind of relieved a little bit of suffering, although it reduced the opportunities for spiteful revenge, and that's kind of a pain in the neck. And so... Then you get your family together a little bit, and you're a little clued in then, at least a bit, because you've done something difficult that's actually difficult. You're a little wiser, and so then maybe you can put a tentative finger out beyond the family and try to change some little thing without wrecking it. It's like, our society is complex, and we teach our students that they could just fix it. It's like, go fix a military helicopter and see how far you get with that. It's like, what are you going to do? You're like a chimp with a wrench. Whack! Oh, look, it's better. 